Fenidi George's resignation as Super Eagles head coach comes after the Nigeria Football Federation resolved to engage a foreign technical advisor to steer the team in subsequent international matches. The Super Eagles are currently fifth in their World Cup qualification group following disappointing results against South Africa and Benin Republic. The results sparked demands for swift action to fix in Nigeria's World Cup qualification campaign. Before the next round of the qualifiers, we have the uh, upcoming qualifiers, which almost all the six matches will be played before March next year. And that, by the grace of God, that will show Nigerians uh, the kind of uh, steps we have taken, we are going to take, or we take to, to make sure that we qualify for the World Cup. Despite having just two competitive games, Finidi's short stint has thrown up conversations on the fate of Nigerian coaches handling the senior national team. Since late Stephen Keshi led Super Eagles to win the African Cup of Nations title in 2013, several Nigerian coaches like Sonde Olise, Samson Siasia and Austin Eguavon have managed the team. Olise and Siasia failed to qualify the team for the Nations Cup in 2017, while Eguavon only led the team to the Nations Cup in 2021. German Gernot Rohr and Portuguese Jose Pacero have managed the Super Eagles. Rohr helped Nigeria to secure qualification for two African Cup of Nations in 2019 and 2021 and the 2018 FIFA World Cup while Pissero only qualified for the competition earlier this year. In the final analysis, Keshi's AFCON triumph and round of 16 place at the 2014 FIFA World Cup haven't been equaled and surpassed, raising questions on the state of the once dreaded national team in Africa. For more on the resignation of coach Finidi George as head coach of the Super Eagles after two matches in charge, we're now being joined by a sports consultant who is also the former media officer of the Super Eagles, Toi Ibitoi. Thank you very much for joining us on the News at 10. It's good to see you again. Thank you, Anne. And the first question to you will be what your reaction was the moment you heard about the drama, quite a drama, from the NFF, between the NFF and, of course, coach Finidi. Yeah, I was, I was um, shocked, like most Nigerians, uh, because I was looking forward to seeing um, a plan to revamp our World Cup aspirations after our poor start, having three points from four games, and then a series of meetings between the NFF and, um, and uh, Finney George, and also a meeting with the sports minister. So I was expecting a plan on the plan on how we will revamp our World Cup aspirations. So when I got the news of Finidi's resignation, I was shocked, I was, I was amazed. And uh, um, I'm still a little bit uh, bewildered uh, with all of the drama, but I hope we can resolve all of these issues as quickly as possible and then focus on how we can get our World Cup plans back on track. But would you now say that Nigerians or uh, uh, maybe the NFF, maybe they're comfortable, well comfortable with foreign coaches are they, are they, do you think that's better for them? Uh, well, if you look at um, the stats, uh, because you, you have to look at the stats to see uh, what they're really saying. Um, and, and I try to put up uh, the stats for the coaches we've had since 2000, that's some 24 years ago, to see what the ratio is. And um, if you take a look at it, uh, we've had about uh, five foreign coaches. Uh, Joe Bonfrey from 2000 to 2001, Betty Vokes. Uh, we've had um, Lars Lagerbach in 2010. Uh, Gernot Rohr from 2016 to 2021, about five years, three months, the longest ever in the history of the national team. And then uh, Pesero, that, uh, con whose contract expired at the end of the Nations Cup earlier this year, from 2022 to 2024. Uh, that, those five foreign coaches um, at that time. And then if you look at the number of indigenous coaches, Nigerian coaches we've had from 2000, you'll be, I mean, it's quite a list. You have Amadou Shwaibu from 2000 to 2000 and 2001, 2002. You have uh, Adebo Yonibide led us to the World Cup in 2002. You had Christian Chuku 
2003 to 2005, you had a Guavoin, 2005, 2007, you had a model coming back, 2008 to 2010, it was sacked just before the World Cup, uh, and then a Guavon took over after Lagerbach led us to the World Cup in 2010. Um, and then we, we've had um, Samson Sia 2010 to 2011, then Stephen Keshi, who is the longest uh, indigenous coach to handle the Eagles in recent times, from uh, 2011 to 2015, without only said, uh, as you had in that report, 2015 to 2016, Austin Eguavon came back, uh, 2021 to 2022, and then of course Finidi is a short-lived term uh, of uh, about less than a month in, in charge. So you, you, we've had about eight um, indigenous uh, coaches, five foreign coaches. Um, but then if you also um, look at the cumulative number of years they've had, we've had foreign coaches for about eight years, and we've had indigenous coaches for um, about 16 years. So for every one year that we've had um, uh, a foreign coach, we've had two years of um, an indigenous coach. So it, it's so much more about the rate of turnover, the turnover rate for us, uh, more than maybe a preference for a foreign coach or an indigenous coach. But what are the records for both foreign and local coaches when it comes to the World Cup qualifications for the country? Yeah, I mean, looking at our qualification for the World Cup since our first edition, uh, qualifying for the first edition in 1994, um, it's, been, it's been pretty even. We've been to the World Cup uh, six times, and then um, if you look at the record, 1994, West Half led us to the World Cup. 1998, Philippe Trouzic qualified us for the World Cup. He was sacked before that World Cup for another foreign coach, um, Mulitino, Bora Mulitinovic. In 2022, Amadou Shoaibu qualified us for the World Cup. He was sacked for another local coach, Adebo Yonik Binde. In 2010, he qualified us again. He was sacked for a foreign coach, Las Lagerbach. Keshi qualified us in 2014, and then Gernot Roh, uh, in 2028. Interestingly, six times, we've had three uh, for foreign coaches and three for indigenous coaches. So it balances out at the end of the day. Um, and that's really interesting because a lot of people believe that um, we've had more success um, under foreign coaches. But from the start, it looks like it's 50-50. So what would you say the challenges are on the part of the NFF in picking coaches? Particularly foreign coaches. Um, it, it has to do with um, availability of top-rate coaches in the world. They are very expensive very, very expensive. You're talking about uh, $100,000 a month uh, for a good coach. That, that's maybe even grade B. They are very expensive. So you, you, you look at um, availability of these top rate coaches uh, for us and how affordable are they? Uh, uh, can, we, can we afford to pay uh, for these coaches? And then you, you look at how adaptable are they? Because there are no guarantees, uh, as they always say, getting a foreign coach is, is, is like night market. I mean, night market. So you're not sure of what you are getting. You may get a high quality coach, very expensive. You may not get the result. You may get a coach not of the same quality who will deliver for you on the result. So these are some of the issues that we've grappled with in terms of um, being able to uh, take care of uh, and manage uh, working with foreign coaches. All right. Thank you very much, sports consultant and of course, former media officer of the Super Eagles, Ibi Toye. Toye, thanks a lot for your time. On the thank news you for the opportunity. Thank you.